Before we leave the measures of central tendency, in other words, average, behind, we need to talk a little bit more about mean. And this page in particular is going to be setting us up for some stuff later on in the course, so pay close attention. There are actually two means. There's a population mean, which has this symbol. It's the Greek letter mu. Mu is how you write it in English. So mu, it makes the m sound, the m sound, if ever you're in Greece. <laughs> Land off, get off the plane and there you go, right? So mu, which is the sum of all the data points divided by the population size. So capital N right there is your population size. So you're saying, hey, add up everybody in your population, divide by how many there are in the population, and you'll know your mu. It's a parameter. A parameter, remember, is a measure of a population, right? It's constant. There is just some value out there in the world that is the population value. It uses the whole population. You add them up. That's what that sigma stands for. Add them up, divide by how many there are. Now, what about this one? This is x bar. Oops. So let me, let me just make sure. That's mu, right? It means the population mean. This is x bar. And that's how we say it. We write the little, that little symbol right there, but it's x bar. It's the sample mean. Right? x bar. All right, so x bar is the sample mean. What do we divide by then? Well, you add up how many there are and you divide by the sample size. So you're only working with a sample, not with the whole population. And it's a statistic because it's a sample, right? So since it's a sample, it's a statistic. See how that goes? Population parameter, sample statistic. This varies from sample to sample to sample. Like every sample is different. No two samples are alike. So it's going to change from sample to sample. This one is what it is in real world, in nature, right? There is some population mean. These sample means and this population mean are not the same. But they should be close. As long as the sample was random and unbiased. We'll learn more about those um, perhaps a little bit later if you have not um, seen all of chapter one yet. But random, meaning you want to choose randomly, not just choose your friends or your relatives, <laughs> and unbiased, right? You, know, you want to bias yourselves. So you want it to be random and unbiased. And that, that right there, this idea right here, that is the basis of chapters nine, well, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. We stop at 11, but it will go on, right? That's a very big deal. It's very important, right? I really can't stress it enough. It's the beginnings of inferential statistics, right? That those two values are not the same. This changes from sample to sample. This is constant. They're not the same, but they should be close. Now, there's nothing really particularly special about mean other than we use it all the time. There are actually two medians. There's a sample median and a population median and two modes as well. Um, but those we don't use for our course, so we don't really care. You're actually seeing that there's two sample sizes, right? So there's, there are two sizes. Counts is what they're called. So we have a sample count and a population count, right? Those are two different things also. They both use the same letter, but they're using it for different purposes. That's why this one's capital, because it's population. That one's lowercase, because it's a sample right there. Now, if that's a little confusing, just think of human body temperatures for a second. So the X bar would be the mean of a sample of people, a random sample, right? So it'd be the average, well, I don't like the word average. I'm going to say mean. So it'd be the mean body temp from a sample of people, a nice random sample would be great. You can imagine, you maybe don't want to get everybody to be the same gender or everybody to be the same ethnicity. You want a wide variety of ages and genders and ethnicities and everything. You want it to be all mixed in there.
This would be the mean body temperature for all people on the planet. X bar, you can find, right? You can go get a random sample of people and stick a thermometer in them. They'll let you, right? If you try to chase down every single person on the planet, one, you're going to be dead by the time you, well, finish a country, let alone the whole con the whole planet. But two, nobody's got that kind of time. And three, it's impossible, right? By the time you're finishing, some of the people you've measured have already died and new people have been born. It's a so this is impossible to find. Sorry, my dog is barking. So you can imagine, say... This part was 97.8 for a certain sample of people. Or the next sample was 98.1 or 98.4 or something like that. But this one is 98.2 degrees Fahrenheit no matter what. Yes, it's not 98.6. That's a myth. Um, if you take nursing classes or, or some health class, you'll find out um, 98.6 is a myth. We're actually a little touch lower than that. And it actually varies a little bit in the day and all sorts of things. So it's more like 98.2. But that's what it actually is. And then all the samples will be around that value. It's not like you're going to get a sample of 92. Like it's just not going to happen. <laughs> right? So um, and these were all degrees Fahrenheit. Sorry, degrees Fahrenheit. All right. So they're not the same but they should be close to each other and close to that population value. And that's key, right? That'll be a big deal to us in chapters eight through 11. Before I move on, I want you to see, this is my actual hat that I got at NASA. I got it at the Kennedy Space Center. And so B, see there's the letter B, greater than, that's the greater than symbol. And then one over N, that part right there is another way to write that right there. They're taking the sum of the x's. They just are saying go from 1 to n, whatever, and divide by n, right? That's the 1 over n part. So average, see? B greater than average. Get it? I got it at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, which I highly recommend going to. It has an Apollo rocket, and it actually has one of the um, space shuttles, so it's very lovely. All right, so if you want to take a, a trip away from Disney World for a day or something, go to the Kennedy Space Center. It's well worth it. All right, let's go back and look at our data set from example one. Was our mean a population mean or a sample mean? And you can go back with the 127 or without. It kind of doesn't really make any difference. So if I look right here, I didn't label it at the time. Why not? Well, because we didn't know the difference. <laughs> so let's go look at it now. When you got it from the calculator, I don't know if you remember, this will be with the 127, but that's okay. See it right there? Look at that top line, X bar, see it? So the calculator always assumes everything's a, um, a sample because the calculator doesn't know any better, right? So, but I would argue that it is an X bar for our particular data set. So I would say X bar is 2.269 pets. If you include the, I'm sorry, if include the 127, right, the tarantula person, then X bar is 6.889. Right? But they're both X bars. Why? Well, because our class, or in this case, this was the class that I took it from, which was in the winter of 2020, in case you want to know. <laughs> so the, the class or our class is a sample. We're not a population. Now, what are we a sample of? Let's think about that. So if you look at this Math 133 class, right, class, either the class you're in currently while you're watching this or, you know, if you're thinking about this class from last um, winter, winter 2020, what is that a sample of? Well, it's a sample of all Math 133, right? So you could say, well, that's a sample of all Math 133. students, right? That class of students is a sample of all Math 133 students. You could go with that. Or um, I think it'd probably be a fairer bet to say that they're a sample of, say, all Jackson College students, right? Kind of an outer ring. 
So it's, it's up to you, whichever one you want to, to say. But either way, that class was a sample. And the class you are in currently is a sample. It's just a question of how big you want to go. I mean, you could also argue that we're a sample of all Michigan college students, right? All Michigan college students or all U.S. college students who go even bigger. The problem is that the bigger the ring you go, the worse this sample is going to be as representation of that, right? So... I would say stick with either the Math 133 students or the JC students for a decent approximation. Say these students were a good estimate of those, right, all Math 133 or all JC students. When you swing out to the whole all Michigan college students, you could do all Michigan two-year college students, all Michigan um, two- or four-year college students, et cetera. And it just gets lo the larger and larger that potential population grows, the worse this sample is for measuring it. So we could just say all... Um, JC students. I don't know why I say college because Jackson College is, <laughs> that's what the C stands for. So I'll just say JC students. There we go. That's fine. Or if you prefer, you can say Math 133 students. That's perfectly fine. But one way or another, it's a sample, right, of those two things. Which is why this has to be an X bar, not a mu. A mu would be the average number of pets for all college students or all Jackson College students or something like that, which we do not know. We didn't poll all college students or all Jackson College students or our Math 133 students for that matter. So we would have to keep it more um, small. 